Fannie Mae, a leading provider of mortgage financing in the U.S., is selling their bad mortgages by the thousands, as this could suggest to avoid being responsible for potentially tens of thousands of foreclosures on their watch, something that would be bad for business for this government-sponsored entity. Mainstream media reports the economy is doing great, the housing market is strong, and jobs have never been better. Well, why aren't they reporting the fact that over 1 million households would be on the street if not for mortgage forbearance and loan modifications, where still thousands of households across America are not able to pay their mortgage payments? This is probably one of the reasons that Fannie Mae is selling pools of non-performing loans and what's called re-performing loans to investor groups who probably can't wait to own a large percentage of these homes where they purchased mortgages on for 35 to 50 cents on the dollar to what real estate brokers say the properties are actually worth. Many of these defaulting and once defaulting homeowners have avoided foreclosures due to years of mortgage forbearance programs and a multitude of loan modification programs to keep them in their homes regardless of their ability to pay as agreed for one reason or another. And now by selling these loans in bundles for less than the unpaid balance, there is a possibility that many of these homeowners will actually still experience foreclosure and that a percentage of these homes will end up in the hands of for rent corporations instead of being purchased by those wanting to occupy the homes. Fannie Mae, the government-sponsored enterprise, is the one offering these homes for sale. So let's see how many loans are being sold, what corporations are buying the loans, and how much are they paying to take these off of Fannie Mae's books. Welcome back to this week's Real Estate Q&A, where we address concerns regarding the U.S. housing market, as well as address five comments or questions from the last week on Saks Realty's YouTube channel. If this is your first time watching, I'm Todd Sachs, a Maryland real estate broker and your host of the Saks Realty Podcast. If you like it here, please consider subscribing and hit that alert bell so you know every time we post content, which is currently three times a week. Saks Realty also broadcasts on your favorite audio podcast channel, as well as most social media platforms. We hope you make Saks Realty part of your day, as everyone should keep informed about the largest financial market in the world, and that's the real estate market. So are we in a recession or not? Are homeowners struggling to pay their mortgages and are they having a hard time paying for the highly inflated prices and services to actually keep their home in good working order? Well, if you listen to mainstream media, it seems like all the data points point to a thriving economy and that everybody is actually doing really well especially now in the election year. But the last thing the White House once published is foreclosures. Now, four years after the start of the pandemic, we're starting to see distress and a lot of remorse showing up in those who stretch their finances to buy a home. Let's see what's happening under the radar. And as I mentioned, Fannie Mae is bundling up what's known as non-performing and re-performing loans, which were actually once loans in default, but for one reason or another through forbearance or some type of mortgage term remodification. Now these homeowners have been making their payments, but maybe that Fannie Mae Maybe they expect that they could, you know, redefault and, you know, maybe become sooner than later again a non performing loan. And maybe that's why they're selling them. But if you want to take a deeper dive into the information I'm about to share, the links are below. So let's go ahead and take a look at this Fannie Mae.com website. And you, here's where we can find the loans being offered for sale, as well as the information on the loans that were sold. Now, it's not easy to understand the confusing way things are sort of presented by Fannie Mae, but I'm doing the best job for you that I can. And I believe that I'm quoting things correctly. And I'm sure if I'm not, Fannie Mae will step in and correct me. So let's take a look. So here we have... Uh, 
whole loan sales and and we'll just kind of go through it a little bit and like i said you can deep dive into it later yourself if you care to non-performing loan sales fannie mae sales of non-performing loans which are part of the federal housing finance agency's 2015 conservatorship scorecard are intended to reduce the number of seriously delinquent loans that fannie mae owns so essentially let's get them away from the government sponsored enterprise that originally bought these loans and get them to somebody else that will deal with the foreclosure process potentially reperforming loans as i had mentioned before on october 11th of 2016 fannie mae began remarketing its first sale of reperforming loans as part of the company's ongoing efforts to reduce the size of its retained mortgage portfolio as indicated above reperforming loans are mortgage loans that were previously delinquent but are performing again because payments on the mortgage loan have become current with or without the use of a loan modification plan now these loan modification plans that that, uh, they're talking about or that we've talked about for the last couple of years since they began doing them post covid a lot of them take a large percentage of their balance up to 30 percent and recast that to a non-interest non-payment second mortgage that is only due upon the sale or the final payment of the actual mortgage or if they refinance or something like that it would become due but this has tremendously dropped a lot of the people that haven't been able to pay as agreed like they planned to when they first said yes to their home um so this has allowed them to pay a lot less now and uh, stay in their home but let's just scroll through here because i want to just dive into a few and go over the numbers but as you can see this is listed in chronological order according to the year and the month Uh, but just take a look here these are you know sale announcements fact sheets and then once there was so like in february this sale is actually in march so um, it hasn't happened yet, but there's details on the sale. But then when we get into the next, you know, uh, batch of months and years, you can see they have a post sales news release where they kind of dive into, you know, who bought them, how much they paid for it, you know, what percentage of the unpaid balance they paid. And then according to the broker price opinions, the valuations of the actual real estate that they bought um, how many what they paid you know pennies on the dollar 35 to 50 cents half price essentially or less on a lot of these sales but let's just kind of scroll through you know so that you can see that there's been quite a few sales that has happened and now we're in 2021 post covid So first up, let's take a look at this uh, press release where Fannie Mae announces the sale of non-performing loans. This is dated February 8th. NPL 2024-1 includes the company's 23rd community impact pool offering. One large pool includes approximately 1,689 loans totaling $247.3 million in unpaid principal balance which is known as UPB. And the CIP includes approximately 38 loans, totaling $10.5 million in unpaid balance. Now, the bids are due, like I said, on March 5th, uh, but I, and then the CIP on March 19th. And the CIP is what is called the Community Impact Pool. And that basically means that they bundle up loans in a specific geographical area and they offer this to smaller investors uh, so that they can um, take part of buying these defaulting or once defaulting mortgages. Now, let's analyze a few that have already closed. Now, this one was February 13th. Fannie Mae announces the result of its 13th reperforming loan sale transaction. It says Fannie Mae today announced the result of its 13th reperforming loan transaction. The deal announced on January 11th included the sale of 2,722 loans, totaling $499.6 million in unpaid principal balance offered in one pool. The winning bidder was 
Pacific Investment Management Company, which we're about to take a look at here. It's expected to close by March, but let's take a look at this pool. The 2,722 loans uh, the average loan size was about 183547 The cover bid, which is the second highest bid for the pool, was 82.375% of the unpaid balance. So, you know, almost 90% of what was unpaid is what they ended up paying for the, the, uh, the pool of mortgages. But here's the, the clincher. When a bank is evaluating a defaulting loan, a defaulting mortgage. They will call a real estate broker like myself and they'll say, hey, we need to do a broker price opinion on this house. Now, you're not allowed to go inside, but you do more of like a drive-by, you take pictures, you show comparable sales, overall condition, the way the house looks on the outside. And they come up with a broker price opinion of what that house should be worth. They purchased this based on what the the brokers thought the properties were worth at 33.45 cents on the dollar, essentially. So who is PIMCO, the, the buyer of these loans? If we go to PIMCO.com, it says right on their website, opportunistic real estate. PIMCO's opportunistic global real estate investments span real estate equity and distressed debt investments include direct equity stakes in real estate assets companies and distressed loans and now let's look at this sale that was back in october of 2023 fannie mae announces winner of its latest non-performing loan sale november 7th Fannie Mae today announced the result of his 22nd non-performing loan sale transaction. The deal announced on October 5th, 2023, included the sale of 1,473 loans, totaling $208.8 million in an unpaid principal balance offered in one pool. The winning bidder of the pool of the transaction was RCAF Loan Acquisition LP, also known as Pretium. The cover bid was the second highest bid for the pool. It was 98.12% of unpaid balance or 38.17% of the broker price opinion. 38.17 cents essentially on the dollar. Who is Pretium, you may ask? So Pretium.com says that we focus on adjacent real estate strategies including single family rentals and residential credit where our data analytics and operating platforms enable us to generate results. So this particular company believes in making money on residential rentals. So let's just take a look at where on earth would these rentals be? Well, it says pretium single family rental markets. Well, here you go, ladies and gentlemen, they're pretty much all over the country. And then there's a smaller CIP loan sale. Again, remember Community Impact Pool. And this press release was dated November 21st. Fannie Mae announces winner of 22nd Community Pool of non-performing loans. This transaction closed in January includes approximately 61 loans totaling $18.4 million dollars. This particular one was bought by 510 Residential Loan Acquisition 5 LLC, which appears to be owned by 400 Capital. And the cover bid, which was the second highest bid for the CIP, was 82.12% of unpaid balance, resulting in 30.89 cents on the dollar or 30.89% of what the broker price opinion was. And uh, here on 400 Capital, um, they say that they have performance throughout the credit cycle. 400 Capital Management asks, 400 Capital Management seeks to achieve high absolute returns with low volatility. Now, I won't continue to bore you with all of these details, but I do want to show you the last sale offering dated back on September 12th, 2023, because this is really when everyone was touting about how job gains were happening and the economy was resilient, very strong. And, you know, despite raising the rates, 
you know, nothing really was happening, uh, especially with the housing market. Uh, but here you go. Fannie Mae announces the 13th sale of reperforming loans. Now, remember, guys, these reperforming loans are they once were in default and whatever reason, reduction of payments, remodification of their loans. They all of a sudden could start paying their regular uh, mortgage again. I mean, that could be possible. But check this out. September 12th, 2023, Fannie Mae today began marketing its 13th sale of reperforming loans as part of the company's ongoing efforts to reduce the size of its retained mortgage portfolio. The sale consists of approximately 12,800 loans and have an unpaid principal balance of approximately $2.65 billion. Now, um, as I said, you know, just to clarify here, reperforming loans are loans that have been or are currently delinquent but have reperformed for a period of time. These terms of Fannie Mae's reperforming loan sale require the buyer to offer loss mitigation options to any borrower who may redefault within five years following the closing of the reperforming loan sale. All purchasers are required to honor any approved or in process loss mitigation efforts at that time of sale, including forbearance arrangements and loan modifications. In addition, purchasers must offer delinquent borrowers a waterfall of loss mitigation options, including loan modifications, which may include principal forgiveness prior to initiating foreclosures on any loan. So, you know, the question would be, you know, why are they buying these? Obviously, they're buying them at a very safe level. Uh, but I think the cautious thing here is a lot of the the loans that are um, being purchased by these companies are companies that are in real estate investments um, and many of them have rental properties. So, you know, one would think that they're probably hoping that uh, they can pick up some of these houses. And the frustrating part, I guess, for me is why aren't we offering these directly to consumers? You know, I get it. I, I, I understand that we have to be sensitive to those that, uh, you know, took obligations that for one reason or another, they can't keep. Um, they can't keep their obligation to the bank and pay as they originally signed or agreed to when they bought the home. The lesson here, what are we teaching people with the lesson of this? Well, I mean, I mean, we're pushing them to buy houses. We're putting these loan programs in place where they don't have to put, where they put very little money down, very little skin in the game. And then we remodify it for the ones that can't pay. And the ones that can pay continue to pay and pay dearly for the competitiveness in the market for this kind of uh, forgiven behavior. So anyway, um, I, I just want to bring you guys up to speed with this really because you're not hearing all of the components and all the pieces that are really happening in the housing market and really i mean this for my first time home buyers people that have never bought a home before because these folks that have defaulted on their mortgages weren't expecting that when they when they said yes when they agreed to overpay in some cases for a home and with little money down with no money in the bank or little money in the bank as reserves to where if something happened financially um, to them, they could sustain it for six months or so. So anyway, let's go ahead. We'll get started on this week's comments and questions. And to kind of go along with what I just spoke about, uh, here are one of our comments, uh, Judy Fabian. She says, I'm looking for a home in a specific area of Florida where I don't live, but follow the data. There is one agent who does videos only on new home developments. Every video, he says, buy now and you will have built-in equity. Absurd, as the unsold inventory is huge and behind the scenes, builders are doing price reductions, self-promotion for a commission is not ethical. Now, let's just boil this down for a minute because I'm not against new home construction, I think it could be a great way to get in the market if you're ready and prepared to buy should we take advantage of these offerings, these price reductions that we are seeing builders do. But there are risks that are involved in building new construction. Now, if you can get in a situation where you don't have to buy the house as is and you can pick and choose what you allow the builder to do, just take the basic home 
and do the upgrades yourself after the builder's out of the picture. You'll save a lot of money that way. For instance, crown molding, you don't need it. Um, if they're offering in the living room the option of carpet or hardwood floors or luxury vinyl plank, do the carpet, do the cheapest, most basic thing, add these things later. If you have the choice of not finishing the basement, you can do these later. You can save a lot of money and build some equity in the home that way. But the concern is if you buy the house with all the bells and whistles, as they say, um, if that community is just starting their construction or they have hundreds or thousands of homes uh, that will be constructed in that subdivision over the next several years, if you find that you want to sell in three years, you could be in a little bit of trouble because you'll be competing with the builder um, and most people will pick in a new construction community, the new home versus the existing home unless there's a price incentive to do so but to the commenter's point we shouldn't be cheerleading i'm not advocating to buy now or not buy now what i'm advocating for is to be educated be aware that if you buy now there could be the possibility that you're buying at the top of the market and we may see a price correction uh, that could be significant uh, I'm not telling you to wait on my account, uh, but uh, I want my buyers to know that that is a possibility. Um, and, you know, of course, I could be wrong and the prices could continue to go up. Our next commenter says, and this is based on our last Tuesday night live stream with uh, my friend Adam Taggart. Adam's a great guy, brought a lot of uh great value to our Tuesday night show. In fact, if you want to hear more of Adam Taggart this Saturday uh, at 930 Eastern time on Saks Realty's channel right here, you can see my interview with Adam. The nice thing is, Adam, you can't find very many interviews with him. He's usually the host of the show, Thoughtful Money, and many people remember him when he was with Wealthion, uh, but I had the opportunity to ask him questions, uh, which I'm honored to bring to you again this Saturday. And if you'd like to check out the live stream, you can do so also. But this commenter, Carl, says, if you really want to know about the housing market, don't ask the so-called expert, he's referring to uh, Adam, who's very brilliant, very bright on a macro scale, economic scale. Now, ask a prospective home buyer. Ask someone like myself and my wife in Georgia. We have looked and have a great prequal, but now we're giving up. We're seeing this a lot. Uh, in fact, Adam uh, called it uh, doom spending. So what we're seeing is a lot of people are giving up hope of ever buying a home, which is terrible. And what they're doing is instead of saving their money and paying off their debt, they're creating more debt and spending their money. Don't do that. What, what Adam referred to was doom spending, where the fact that they are giving up, they're going on these lavish vacations. Now, look, I'm okay with you taking vacations, but let's not jump off the cliff. Let's think about about saving money and being ready when the market does adjust, which I believe will happen. It has to, guys. There's no way that we can still sell these houses, the median income earner, where the median home price is five, six, nine times the median household income. I think we're going to see a massive correction, uh, and I think it's going to result from more inventory finally hitting the market. Our next commenter says, not only are incomes not keeping up with the overpriced housing bubble, just like I said here, uh, but we're now starting to see layoffs and big corporations cashing out their stock. There's going to be a lot of people holding the bag with this, and it will not end well. And the, you know, we also spoke about this in our Tuesday night, the fact that uh, a lot of corporations overspent on labor. Labor, if for many companies, the number one largest expense on their income statement. And they had to really overspend. I know you're not thinking it's overspending, and neither am I in many aspects when we're talking about wages. But corporations, especially the big corporations, are looking to make their stockholders happy, uh, their boards happy, so they have to return profits. And as consumer spending is starting to retract, and it's a fact it is, um, these corporations are looking at ways to cut costs. So we're seeing massive corporate layoffs. A lot of these layoffs are at massive management levels, white collar jobs where these people have homes or paying for homes. And a lot of them, they need both incomes in the household a lot of, in a lot of cases to in order to keep those those expensive homes. 
So I think that we need to be very cautious, make sure that our jobs are stable, make sure we're doing a good job at work, uh, maybe pick up some kind of a side hustle just to get your cushion, uh, your financial cushion in a position, even paying your rent that you can do so uh, to honor your lease. Uh, But I do think that we're going to see higher unemployment rates coming in the near term. Our next governor, Gary, says lowest rates, but prices are insane. Give me these rates with a $150,000 house, not a $500,000 house, which is way overvalued. Uh, I agree, Gary. The issue here is a lot of the lenders, they want to say date the rate, marry the house. The problem is you can't always refinance. If rates drop, we should really be looking at what the asset cost is because that is where if you need to sell, you get transferred to another you know, uh, state, you need to sell your house for whatever reason. It's actually the price of your home that, uh, that really matters in that, in that scenario. Uh, yeah, great, 2.74%, 30-year fixed rate mortgages are fantastic if you're going to stay there forever, but the minute you sell the house, uh, the value of the house is what's going to determine whether you can put anything in your pocket or bring a check to the table. So I agree, Gary, uh, what we really have to focus on are affordable houses uh, that we can afford at today's interest rates, which by the way, are not high. Even 7% is like a 50-year running average for the 30-year fixed rate mortgage. And then finally, Michael uh, Golpe here says, uh, excellent point. This is referring to what Adam Taggart said in our last Tuesday Night Live, talking about first mover advantage and behavioral economics. What Adam was saying is, and and this is kind of what we all, uh, or uh, people that are bearish in the housing market, I won't say everybody believes this, but someone that's been in the, the industry for as long as I have serving the housing market, I've seen these trends before. Uh, if we don't have some kind of a break in home pricing, it will literally be, we will have, you know, defied all odds of um, history. What has happened in similar circumstances where rapid inflation outpacing wage growth results in some type of correction. Now, what Adam was saying and what this commenter is referring to is that once we start really seeing the tipping point, the the narrative change to where inventory starts to flood the market, whether it's the 30 million uh, baby boomers that will be retiring or downsizing. And we may see areas like in Florida where they retire to or North Carolina in smaller 55 plus or condos may increase in value because a lot of these baby boomers will be reducing their uh, the size of their home. But that will flood the market with potentially flood the market with what everybody wants and that's single family housing uh in america so 30 million potential over the next you know five years or so uh, could hit the market of the baby boomers downsizing they call that a silver tsunami Um, and then not to mention the fact that there may be a lot of short-term and long-term rentals hitting the market where people got into business and realized it, it wasn't worth it and they come back to market as well as other people just deciding to sell those second homes to free up some some cash and stop the bleeding with the rising cost of like insurance and things like that but what adam was saying is that once that tipping point starts to happen we might see where hey i want to be the first to sell before i don't want to be at the bottom of this pile so we may see a rapid increase once the 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 inventory starts to hit the market of sellers really dumping and dumping fast and cutting cost prices just to get in front of the curve so we could see that happen guys we uh we appreciate you here at sax realty if you haven't subscribed to our channel as i said before please consider doing so now smash that alert bell you know every time we upload content just like this and keep those comments and questions coming because you never know yours may be on next week's real estate q a and the biggest compliment that you can provide for me and all of us here at sax realty that work so hard to bring you this information is to share it share these videos with someone that you love uh, and help us spread the word of what you're not hearing in mainstream media and uh, if you like the video you can hit the thumbs up it'll let me know you did see you next time sax realty maryland broker number 607720 office number 443-318-4514 equal housing opportunity